Okay, folks, we're back. I'm your host, BKP, and uh, this is a special segment we're bringing to you today. We have been talking to uh, so many different officials up in North Georgia concerning state of emergency, uh, um, state of emergency that's been put in place in several counties in North Georgia. Right now, joining us on the phone is Dr. Raymond Tidman. He's from Fannin County, and he has his practice in Fannin County. Dr. Tidman, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Um, let's let's just go directly. We have one case that um, is reported on the CDC website in Fannin County that's a positive. Now, before before uh, I bring you in, now our understanding, my understanding also, because I heard it in a press conference, it's against the law not to report a positive to CDC. Is that true? Well, yeah, I mean, it's 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 part of our um, obligations as practicing physicians to particularly in a healthcare crisis to keep the public health services um, up to date on what we're seeing. So, I mean, I'm, I don't know about the legality of it or, or whether a law enforcement officer would be involved, but it's it's just part of our obligation during these times. I guess what I, I guess what I wanted to get to is is if if we're not seeing it on the CDC website, and we're just hearing rumors flying around in social media that there's two in this county and they're not telling us that's pretty much not true correct yeah i, I think you can you can depend on their website um now i'm not saying that that they're perfect but i i can't imagine a clinician keeping data away from them um whether they get it posted that day or the next day i mean that's that's kind of an administrative thing so well, last night, last night we reported on Fetcher News the first confirmed case in Fannin County. That the first confirmed case that was tested in Fannin County. And last night, through social media messages, text messages, myself, my wife, and our reporters, um, we were inundated with who. Now, um, the medical field, you're not able to tell us who, but what no. kind of what kind of details can you tell us uh, about a positive test? Well, this case in particular um, was actually tested last week, uh, actually a week and a day ago now. You know, it's that, that long to get a turnaround. Uh, the individual does live up here. They actually um, have a full-time home, and they had been at a work conference out of state. Um, so they had returned with res upper respiratory symptoms and, and significant fever. And we um, did the proper isolations and, and tested them. and then had them go home and self-isolate. So the, the individual's fine now. And, um, you know, I think all the, the relevant protocols were undertaken. Okay, the individual individual is fine. So let me go with that. The individual is fine, not hospitalized. And, and like I said, I know you're limited what you can yeah. say, but I think these are the questions that people are having. Sure. If if you test positive, and you, your fever breaks and you go through the 24, 48, 78, two hours that this takes to run, you still have to, you can't just say, I'm over it and I can go out. Are you still a carrier? Yeah, well, you should assume that. I mean, the, we, we'd like you even, like this individual needed to stay inside 14 days. Um uh, it, you know, you know, if they were further symptomatic, let's say they got sick or they were in the hospital and stuff like that, we would we would be treating them and retesting them at some point before we release them in, into the public. So you feel, so, but yeah. but you you tell us that if, if someone does test positive and they 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 recover from this, they get through their fever. Yeah. If they follow the re recommended fourteen day quarantine, then after that, should be okay. Yeah. Oh, they should be fine. And, you know, the majority of patients with this are going to be fine. Um, and and it, the case number is so small here now, you know, the, the health department folks can manage these patients. You know, I can just turn them over to the health department and they can make sure they're doing okay and, and they're following isolation procedures. They also do checks of, of other individuals that may have been in significant contact. So, um, at this point in our county or in our region, the, this is quite manageable by the health department and, and they can run down all contacts. All right. I think what a lot of people are asking is, is how, how do doctors, uh, the health department, 
all working together with the counties. Now, my understanding is um, uh, through the health department and some conference calls, counties have been encouraged to do a state of emergency, which they have to do that for the legal verbiage has to say state of emergency. But the understanding that I have is um, there's a concern about the strain on the local uh, medical industry that uh, we have available to us and they're recommending and counties are following suit. Are, are you, as, as a physician yourself, are you glad to see that these counties and cities are taking action as far as social separation, closing some non-essential stores down? What say you? Well, I, I'm glad that the, the public in general is getting educated about taking this virus seriously and, and particularly about uh, practicing, you know, to be highly technical, you being not being a vector. You know, that, that is, uh, do behaviors that minimize the chance that you're going to be spreading your germs and stuff, regardless of what you know about them, on anyone else. So keeping a little bit of a distance, you know, um, sneezing and coughing in, in, in the right way so that you're not spreading a lot of vapor around. If you are sick, stay at home. Don't go to work sick. If you are sick and you have to go out, wear a mask. Uh, if you're sick enough, call your doctor's office. I mean, th those are all very important things. But I want to go back to something you and I talked about last week, um, because we are going to evolve into a, a different way of managing this. You know, now that we have data coming in um, and, and we can start making really informed decisions, this virus will be around for weeks and months and we'll know where the hotspots are and we'll know how to more focus um, ac things that have major economic damaging effects. Nothing about this will change with regard to protecting those at risk. And, you know, I, I use the term, you know, treat your seniors like fine China. So I think one of the next levels of understanding we need to start getting in our heads is how do we protect those that we know are highest risk from this? So that means if you've got a, an elderly parent, parent, you know, as we have in my office, I have staff that, that has elderly parents or a parent with, with cancer, your contact with them has to drop off markedly. And when you are in contact with them, you have to use protection. Um, so it's it's really a matter of mentally thinking about those people that you are around that you have immediate contact with and how you're going to protect them because they're still going to be at risk for some time now, even as we eventually go back to living our normal lives. You um, know, we, li we live in an area where a lot of people uh, in the area um, have been here generation. So somebody is used to going by moms and saying hello before they go home from work because that's just where we're at and we just don't think twice about it. But those are the kind of things we have to think about now. Yeah, that, and that's my point. And I mean, I, I don't want to be too ethnocentric, but I, I think we live in this area, a pretty healthy environment. Yes. We're pretty, we're pretty spread out. We have lots of clean air and clean water uh, and we really care about each other. So, so right now, the real I think fine tuning we need to do is how are we protecting those at risk, at highest risk from our vapors, so to speak, for a while, you know? So, so we just have to keep a little more space for them or, and certainly, you know, do a lot of good hygiene things. And, and that's where to, mentally we need to start turning this around and saying, okay, that's something I need to figure out and get straight for myself and just get disciplined about it. You know, um, we, you know, let me just say this. Uh, there's been several media outlets, and I think you know who they are, that have tried to uh, put the vision between the president and his staff, especially like Dr. Fuche, and um, I, I'm embarrassed to say the lady. That's embarrassing. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's doing an outstanding job. But they're continually trying to drive a wedge uh, between the president and his medical staff that is uh, he's consulting with. The president said yesterday he would like, and, and I thoroughly understand millions of Americans want to go to church on Easter Sunday. I will just say the little joke, small joke, is uh, a pastor one time used to call some of them Easter lilies because that's the only time they mm. came out. But I'm sorry, mm. but maybe bad time. <laughs> but Americans like to go to church on Easter Sunday, and the president said, um, he would like for us to be back 
Easter Sunday, worshiping in church. How realistic is that? What kind of concerns well, do you have? Well, um, I mean, it's you've got to start putting a stake in the ground. You've got to start working towards it. It may or may not be that date, but but they they will have more and more data to drive these decisions with. So I'm comfortable with their decision process. Here, here's here's an, another good analogy, um, and I, I think it strikes home. Let, let's say that that heaven forbid in your family, one of your parents was stricken with cancer. I mean, everybody that in your family and your immediate uh, close friends would be in the hospital with him or her day in and day out as that diagnosis was made and as things happened. At some point, you would have to say to family members who looked at you, you know, I need to get back to work. You would nod your head and say, yeah, you need to get back to work. I'm here with mom or I'm here with dad. That's what's happening in our country now. At some point, we have to go back to work, and we need to be supportive of each other and say, okay, who goes back and when and why? You just got to gotta go on with your life. We can't, can't all stay at the hospital waiting for, you know, the terrible thing to happen. Um, and, and that's, you know, I, I keep saying this. No. We live on a deadly planet, and we need to take care of each other. And I think that the media is is quite disgusting about this. I mean, th this is a real we moment for the country. And I think the country is coming together well and people are paying attention and they're learning and they're shifting and doing things differently. And it's very hard. Well, you know, that is a very eye opening way to look at it, doctor, because I've experienced that myself with with brothers and sisters in, in 2019 um, with a family member. And we actually were in the, the hospital. I live a thousand miles away and we were like, okay, who can do this? Who can do that? Who can stay? And, you know, who has to get back to work? And I have a business to run. And, and you know, I, I know what you're saying there. And that's somewhat where we're at with America on, like you said, putting a stake in the ground. So we put a stake in the ground, but we got to have something to work towards. And we're going to have to get back to work. Yeah. We're meant to work. I mean, that, that's where our uh, our vitality comes from. We're, we're working people. Our self-esteem is in our work. Our purpose is, is greatly into our work. So, um, you know, we that's something we go back to. Okay. I know you're busy. So I'll finish yeah. up with this and thank you so much for being on. How, how, when you say concern, we have one in Fannin County. What is your concern? Let's bring it to Fannin County, Gilmer, the surrounding region union. What are some of your concerns right now? And do we have uh, do we have the necessary um, items at hospitals and medical facilities to weather this through? And, and let me say this, because what everybody is saying, which I understand, is the data we read today is five days old because it's yeah. coming in today. So is this going to be worse next week? And what should we be doing in North Georgia? And what's your concerns in our area? Okay, so so that's a good question. Let me, let me point to it this way. The skyrocketing things you're seeing in New York, part of that skyrocketing thing is that they have the tests rolling out and they're testing people. So the, the rise in the number of cases in New York is the rise in the number of tests in New York. It parallels those two. They're just now finding these cases. These cases have been there. Now they're finding them. We still do not have the denominator to this thing. How many people are walking around with the virus? There are some good with little pockets of data. One of the cruise ships where they had, had the major outbreak, they tested everybody on that cruise ship. And it turns out that of half of all the positives that were positive for coronavirus, half of them had absolutely no symptoms whatsoever, not even a cold. So there are a lot of folks who are gonna be walking around with this virus. And as we figure that out and, and go back to our lives, I'm going to back, go back to my original statement. We have to learn how to protect those at risk. And, and who's at risk? The, you know, the, the very elderly and people who have comorbid problems like advanced diabetes or complications of, of cancer, chemotherapy or any immune suppression. So that's where we're gonna learn something different as a society and that's a good thing for us to learn. Um, one other point you asked about is the state of, of the county. I, I have no doubt that, that all the physicians and caregivers in our area, in the nearby counties, are highly tuned into this. I, I must get four or five emails a day from each of the hospitals I'm associated with about the state of the hospital. I called the administrator in anticipation of your call, the local administrator here. We have more testing 
available. We have more coming in. We have tests now that can be turned over in a day or two. So our testing locally is getting better. And the main thing is, uh, and then thirdly, that a lot of us are practicing more telemedicine right now just to reduce the amount of people in the waiting rooms. So if I can manage a patient um, via telemedicine right now and they don't need to come into the office and it's a simple follow-up of getting some labs or getting some surveillance or checking on how they're doing, I'm doing it through telemedicine, as are many other physicians. So you'll actually see waiting rooms with less people in them right now because we're trying to really keep the, those at risk um, protected. Close with this. Uh, we see it on the Internet. Uh, we're inundated with it. But you don't want people to just come and say, I think I'd like to get tested. You want them to have symptoms, number one, be symptomatic. And if they are, what are those symptoms? So the answer to your question is correct. I mean, they, if everyone wanted to be tested, we'd have to have 350 million tests. And that's just not possible. We have millions of tests, but, but you know, maybe one-tenth of that at, at our best time. So, no, everyone can't be tested. Now, who should be tested? Uh, those who know they've had a contact, uh, those healthcare workers that are at risk for contact that we're trying to keep them at work and, and may have uh, brushed into or been around someone, uh, and certainly those with, with symptoms, high symptoms that, that are nearing hospitalization. So I think if there's any confusion about it, ask your doctor, ask your health care provider. And, and it's okay to be a little bit pushy. I mean, or, but people are a little, a little bit on edge. Um, but if you are an at-risk person in particular, you have comorbid problems or you're advanced in your age and you have upper respiratory symptoms, you know, you need to get tested. And, and so you call your doctor and, and figure out how to do that. We're not, we're not in trouble with limited tests right now. So, you know, ask. All right, close, close with yeah. this. If someone were to be, if someone tests positive, are they obligated to start researching who they've been around and notifying them within a period of time? Or oh, immediately. If they're positive, then we notify them and that investigation begins immediately. Okay. All yeah. right. Thank you, Dr. Tim. We appreciate you so yeah. much. We know how busy you are, and we appreciate you taking yeah. time out of your day to share this information. We appreciate you. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care. All right, folks, we've been on the line with Dr. Raymond Tidman, and uh, Raymond Tidman, uh, physician here in Fannin County. We're going to, uh, I was going to, uh, this will be on, go ahead and put the information up. This will be on our uh, YouTube channel, FYN TV, Fetch Your News, our social media. That's our phone number and our email address uh, to, to um, get in touch with us if you have any information. We're going to go ahead and sign off the air. We were going to stay on till noon, but we're going to sign off because we're hopefully we're going to try to get Sheriff Downey Craig, and he's very busy. He's not ignoring us. We know that. I've spoke to him. As soon as he texts me and says he's available, we'll try to get him on. But in Till then, we're going to sign off, and uh, we're going to sign off, and uh, we'll see you when we see you. But follow us on social media because that's where we're posting when we have somebody going to be live to update. So we'll talk to you later there, uh, Destiny, and let's get this one up also.